Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I have just returned from Japan, and、uh, as you can tell, I'm a little, a little tired, <laughs> a little jet lagged.、Um, but this video, I just kind of want to give you guys kind of a, a really brief overview of my trip in Japan.、Uh, I actually didn't know exactly what the schedule was going to look like until I actually got there. Now, I had an idea of what it was going to be, but、uh, it turned out to be completely different. Um, all for the good. I mean, there were some amazing, amazing trips、uh, or amazing visits I had in Japan. All I can say is a lot of these meetings were business and partnership related. And so you guys will hear more of them as time goes on and as products are being released.、Uh, I can talk more about them then. But until then, I really can't discuss what was actually being discussed、um, at these meetings. I'm being, t-、uh, yes, that's part of my jet lag that's actually talking right now. So, the trip started with me obviously landing in Osaka, and then the very next day of me landing, I had a visit with Sakai Takayuki and touring their factory and their facilities and meeting a number of their employees. Now, one of the most memorable persons I met at Sakai Takayuki is Doi san, their head bladesmith. And, you know, if you know of Sakai knives or Takayuki knives, you will know of Doi san. He's world famous. He has crafted some of the most amazing knives in the world at this point. And he actually knew of me, which was actually really interesting and bizarre,、uh, flattering for sure. He knew of me, and when he heard that I was actually coming, he had a knife crafted for me. And that was actually really cool. So, my parting gift before I left was he told me that he knew I was coming that day, and he had this really amazing. Uh, petty that he made for me. Now, in addition to that petty, he also gave me this Yanagi b a that he made that morning as well.、Uh, he figured I would like to restore, or not really restore, but to bring the knife to life. So, both these knives are very raw. They basically have been shaped and hammered into、um, kind of the raw form of what a blade would look like. And then from there, I can do what I want with them. So, once I get them here, they're actually in the mail. They'll be here in a day or two. And so, once they're here, when I do the Sakai Takayuki video, I'll show you guys what they actually look like in raw form. Then I'll do a separate video、uh, of each one of them where I will make them into an actual knife from their raw billet、uh, form. So, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with those knives. I cannot wait to actually get them here. For someone so well known and someone so highly regarded in the knife community to say that he knew. Who I was, and that I was coming, and that he spent time making these two knives just for me. That was a very humbling experience, a very moving experience for me. So, you know, the, the visit with Sakai was really fun, and it was definitely a, a visit that I'll never forget.、Uh, so, the next meeting was with Naniwa, and that was really cool because Naniwa, as you guys know, is one of my favorite Whetstone brands. And to go to the headquarters, sit down with their international director who speaks. Fluent and perfect English was really interesting. So, sitting down with that meeting was really bizarre because you know, they kind of knew who I was. And,、um, and, uh, and you know, to be honest, when I sit down with anybody, with a director of a company or a bladesmith, and they say they know who I am,、uh, I'm really taken back by that. I'm very surprised because I am just a small YouTube channel. And,、um, You know, and, and to hear people say they knew who I am and they've seen my work you know, years ago before I am sitting、uh, in a meeting with them is just、uh, still something that is very new to me.、Um, but I mean, it's a pleasant surprise. And so that was the same thing with Naniwa. They knew, they knew who I was.、Uh, you know, they, they basically said that whenever one of my videos comes out,、um, they would have like a spike in sales or.、Uh, A spike in interest to their website or from their distributors, you know, asking for more stones of a particular grit or the sink bridge or something like that. And、uh, I'm kind of just, you know, I mean, it's a very pleasant surprise. Anyways, we had a great meeting with the folks over at Naniwa, and there's some really fun stuff that's happening that you guys will hear of very soon. Um, then, after Naniwa, I went to a village, a small village that's about 150 miles away from Osaka. I can't remember the name right now、uh, off the top of my head, but I met with a Tanaka Hamano. Tanaka Hamano is probably the coolest、um, like、bladesmith I have ever met or even heard about. So, I mean, if I were to run a business、uh, in the middle of Japan, this is what I would have I would have a house 
a show, you know, showroom and a work facility. Um, they're all right next to each other. And it's in the middle of this pristine village. Um, there's rice paddies everywhere. And what's really cool about Tanaka-san is that he is a drift car racer on the weekends. So when he's not making knives, he goes and drifts cars. I mean, how cool is that? Knives and cars. I mean, I, I don't think, like, I can't think of a better combination of two interests that I would love doing um, if I wasn't doing a YouTube channel. I mean, it would just be so cool to be drifting cars on the weekends and then to be making knives on the weekdays. Uh, I mean, he lives a really cool, really cool life. He's got a V8 Lexus uh, in his garage, or at least it's a V8 Lexus here in the States. It's the SC400, and then a classic um, Toyota. It's like, I think it's, I think it's the car from um, Initial D. Okay, so for anime fans out there, Initial D is a Toyota Celica, right? Right? <laughs> so I think that's what his drift car is. It's really cool. Tanaka-san is a three-man team. It's basically two people in the shop and one person in the showroom. Um, and he's put together just an amazing business. And I, uh, we are doing some stuff together. And so you guys will see more of that as well. Uh, hopefully in the next three or four months, I'll have the first batch of knives that we're working with here so that's all i can say at this moment <laughs> that's all i can say and over the course of the next three days i spent a lot of time in ichizen ichizen was probably one of my most memorable trips because i had a chance to sit down with uh yu kurosaki kato-san saji-san kamo anryu-san and ikeda-san and that was a really cool lunch basically in the middle of uh, rice paddies and farmland there is the takafu knife village and then a couple of blocks from there is this amazing uh, it's a restaurant in the middle of like in, in the middle of the forest and we're surrounded by bamboo wild cranes uh, rice paddies uh, koi fish i mean it was just the most picturesque restaurant setting you can ever think of and in that setting we had really great sushi uh, but even more so, even more amazing than that was we're at the table or I'm at the table with all these people. And these are people that I've been following for years. I love their knives. As a matter of fact, I just purchased a whole bunch of knives from Saji, Ikeda, and uh, Kato. Uh, and then I've got a couple from Saji coming and so, and Anryu as well. And so these people I have been admiring for so long and to be able to sit down with them for lunch uh, to converse with them to pick their brains a little bit um, you know I it's hard to explain my feelings and my thoughts that were happening um, at that lunch meeting and then after the sushi lunch I had a chance to go back to the knife village and really just watch all these guys work and um, really see them up close and that was an amazing experience um, they all have their own personal touches on their knives. I've mentioned this in a couple of my videos earlier this year is that I really wanted to focus on artisan made knives and handcrafted knives from Japan. And so the folks in Ichizen, these guys are all artisans. They make their handles, their blades uh, from scratch. They do all their own sharpening, their flattening. Um, these guys are knife craftsmen and artisans uh, at the purest definition. And so to sit down with them and to see them work the level of attention that they put into their knives um, was really something special. And so for me, this was a trip that, you know, if I were to kind of like sum my entire trip down to just one or two days, uh, the highlights were definitely spending time with the folks over at Ichizen. You have young up and coming uh, craftsmen like Ikeda and Yu Kurosaki who are world famous at this point, but they're so young, they're, they're my age, they're in their 30s. And, and I think that these guys have another 30, 40 years of just pure growth uh, in their knife making ability. And then to sit down with Anryu-san and Saji-san uh, and Kamo-san, and these guys are the founders of the Takafu Knife Village. And uh, to see them, you know, up close and personal, to meet them, to shake their hand, and then to actually have them uh, show me the knives that they're working on. That was just something that I never thought would have been possible. Um, never mind having them all together in the same room at the same dining table, but to sit with them at their desk and for them to show me um, pieces that they've just made that morning and then be able to purchase them, you know, and bring them home. That was really cool. 
Uh, then after that, I had a chance to meet with Ryusin. Ryusin is a very well-known knife maker um, in, they're also in Ichizen. They're actually just right across the corner or right around the corner from Saji-san. And so I had a chance to sit down with the president, uh, talk about some of the details of some knives that I may or may not be working <laughs> on. Uh, so you guys are here about that as well. Uh, then after that, I went over to Niigata and to Subami Sanjo. Um, that was a really fun trip with the folks over at Tojiro. Now Tojiro is a very large manufacturer. They make a lot of knives. Uh, I got to meet their head bladesmith, uh, as well as go over some of the details of a knife that I'm working on with them as well. Their international director is a guy by the name of uh, Kita-san. And Kita-san is the six foot three Japanese man who went to college in Chicago uh, or in Illinois somewhere in a small college in Illinois back like 30 years ago. And uh, he came here not speaking any English at the age of 18. And uh, you know, imagine a six foot three Japanese guy who doesn't speak English in a school of 100% Caucasian. <laughs> and so hearing his experience in America was really fun and really interesting. And he is just uh, a really fun guy to talk to. Um, you know, just very open, very uh, lively, and just full of laughter. And, uh, and then they treated us uh, at this amazing hotel at the base of a mountain just over the sea, uh, or just across from the sea. And, you know, we're in this national park surrounded by a bamboo and there's just this amazing shrine across the street from the hotel. Um, I also had raw chicken that night <laughs> with him, by the way. Uh, and so, uh, everyone loves raw chicken in Japan, apparently. Um, but yeah, so he treated me to this amazing, amazing sushi dinner with raw chicken. And uh, it was just the most picturesque hotel I could imagine and just you wake up and you look outside your window and you're looking at the mountains um, just this lush green mountain and I mean it's it was just I could live there I mean this place was so beautiful walking around the neighborhood uh, they're all homes that are you know two or three hundred year old homes that are still standing it was just really cool and you just have this this really serene setting uh, there's a magical setting of a place and uh, I would love to go back there and maybe spend more time there. So I don't know, maybe I'll go back. Uh, but anyways, that visit with Sojiro was very cool. During that same trip, I actually got to meet a man by the name of Hinora-san. And Hinora-san is one of the most famous uh, knife makers in all of Japan. I think he's like 70 years old, but he looks like he's in his 50s. His son is now making knives with him. And Hinora-san has been featured in a number of wood-making and knife-making magazines, and he is one of the very few uh, craftsmen still sharpening knives with whetstones, as opposed to using machine um, grinding stones. He's actually sharpening knives by hand. The visit with Hinora-san was about two hours, and an hour of that was just him talking about his knife experience, uh, or his experiences of making knives, and then the next hour was me being in his shop uh, in his sharpening shop where he sharpens all of his knives by hand, uh, getting a first-hand demo and lesson from him. His choice of stones are very similar to mine. Um, his sharpening style is is classic Japanese hand sharpening and to get a demo lesson from him was actually, uh, was very cool. That trip, uh, that alone, you know, getting that hour with Hinora-san um, was worth the entire trip. Uh, so uh, I've got a couple of his knives coming um, so you guys will see that very soon I'm very excited for his knives his knives are oh, uh, they are handcrafted 100% but they are so meticulous he's one of the only craftsmen that have uh, the Damascus cladding on the spine of the knife uh, that's something that he developed that nobody else has ever developed and also there's something very special about his Damascus cladding uh, his Damascus cladding is actually handmade by him. He actually makes his own steel, uh, his core steel and the Damascus cladding he makes by himself. And so when you, when you hold his knife, you can see a Damascus pattern, but it is laid in such a way that you will never see on any other manufacturer. And it can only be done 
uh, in a very special technique that he has developed over the, you know, the decades of making knives. And so when you see his knives, it, there is a distinction that is like no other. And I can only show you a photo of it or a very short clip of it. Um, but that how he does that is unlike anything else. And it's a trade secret that he has not shown anyone uh, ever. And I don't think I don't know if his son even knows how to make <laughs> that uh, Damascus cladding the way he does. After that, I met a really cool craftsman by the name of um, Masaki, Masaki-san. And he is a 30 year old craftsman. And what's really unique about him is at the age of 25, he took a Harley and rode throughout Japan for three years. And he spent three years touring Japan on a motorcycle. Um, that is, <laughs> I mean, that alone makes him one of the most interesting knife makers in all of the world. And, uh, you know, and sit down and you know, sitting down with him hearing how he makes his knives uh, and to see his maturity and his experience in knife making but at the level of knives that he's making at the age of 30 it's absolutely incredible i've purchased a couple of his uh, knives while i was there so i have them coming here uh, hopefully in the next week or so and um yeah so i'm really excited to showcase his knife and to review his knife and to use his knife because i think his knife uh, and a lot of these knives that i'm that i've been talking about are they're all they're all going to be collector's items uh, at some point. Um, their value will increase, uh, will only go up at this point. And uh, so I'm really excited to be a part of this history and to be a part of the very beginning of his journey, of his uh, knife making journey. And um, one of my last visits while I was in Tsubame was uh, Yoshikane, Yoshikane-san. Uh, this guy is the funniest knife maker I have ever seen. <laughs> so he's very camera shy, you know, when I ask him if I can view it tape. And, and all of these craftsmen, when I'm there, the first thing I ask is, is it okay to keep the camera rolling? And they pretty much all say yes. Uh, Yoshikane-san said no. <laughs> he says he's real camera shy. And, um, you know, so, you know, he allowed a photo to be taken with him. And I actually can't even share that photo because he asked me respectfully to not share that photo and I will respect his wishes. But uh, I wanted a photo with him to, uh, to kind of just mark our first meeting. And that may be the only photo I'll ever get with Yoshikane-san. So, you know, it's a very treasured photo for me. Um, but going through his shop and sitting down with him and talking with him for oh, a good two hours or so, um, there was something very interesting that he said that stuck with me. And um, he said that we are knife craftsmen. He, he showed me some really, just really beautiful um, patterns that he created and some really amazing designs. And, you know, and I asked him, you know, are you afraid that other knifesmen or craftsmen will copy your designs? He said very confidently, he says, we are craftsmen. He says, we are very proud and we will not copy other people's designs. Uh, that to me kind of sums up how I feel about Japanese knives is the knives craftsmen in Japan are so proud of what they do and they are perfectionists uh, at what they do is that they're going to make the best product they can make with their abilities no matter what. And they're not trying to copy other designs. They're not trying to find what are the trendiest designs. They are perfecting what they believe is the best knife they can make. Uh, and that's why I love Japanese knives so much. And people always ask me, why don't I get into Je you know, German knives and French knives and Belgian knives and American knives is, and while I think they all have a place of their own, I think that the, the knife mentality, the knife making mentality in Japan is on a different level. Uh, there is so much history and tradition with Japanese knife making and, uh, and a part of me feels like it's going to be lost in the next 30 or 40 years. Uh, Japan right now is in a labor crisis. You know, they have an aging population. There is more older people than younger people. And so crafts like knife making is slowly but surely disappearing. And so for me, meeting people like Masaki-san, um, Ikeda-san, uh, Yukorosaki is very important because I want to support them in what they're doing. I want more young people to keep this tradition alive because a handcrafted knife is different than any other knife that you'll ever buy. Uh, I'll go into that in more detail in the very near future. But once you hold and use a handcrafted knife, 
there's something about it that you cannot get with a mass production knife. Um, once you guys understand that, it will make a difference. It will show you that $300 artisan knives are actually cheap and are actually worth their money. You know, this trip was very different. It was all about meeting craftsmen and artisans and being able to communicate with them at a much more deeper personal level. Um, to see them work in their environment was something that I never thought possible. You know, a couple of years ago when this whole channel started, I just was sharpening knives in my garage. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> um, but I never foresaw that I would be able to sit down with some of the greatest names in Japanese knife making. And so this trip for me was very special. Um, obviously with the fact that being, being able to travel to Japan is very special, uh, but being able to sit down and, um, you know, to be a part of history, uh, to be a part of something that is a dying trade in Japan, which is to me one of the saddest things of this trip is, you know, meeting Anryu-san was a huge pleasure. Anryu-san, Saji-san, and Kamo-san these guys are like the OGs of, of modern day knife making. Um, they're all in their 60s and 70s, and you know, their knives are not gonna be made much longer. You know, Anryu san is, I think, 76 or something like that. He's still very strong and very robust. And meeting Doi san as Sakai Takayuki, you know, these people I've heard of and have known of for many years. Uh, and then to see them and meet them all in a single week and sit down with them, share a meal with them. Uh, that to me was just very, very special. And, uh, you know, I hope to go back to Japan. I've already been invited to go back for another visit in October for the Seki Knife Festival by a number of different um, vendors this time. So last time I was there with the folks over at Cutlery Moore and Yaksel, uh, this time, Professor X has invited me back to meet some of his other partners in Japan. Uh, so um, I haven't asked Professor X if I can put him on camera yet, so I don't think he wants to be on camera. I don't know how long this video is already, but I'm gonna just probably stop it here. I just wanna say thank you to all of my subscribers and Patreon supporters for making all of this possible. And uh, without my subscribers and uh, my supporters, I would not be where I am today. Uh, so I just wanna say thank you. And you know, this, um, I am now living the dream that I never thought I would have. And you know, to be able to sit down in front of a camera, talk about knives, use knives on a daily basis, and uh, to have people listen to me, <laughs> to, to hear my opinions, and to, you know, to, to do what I do, it's really special. And you guys may be wondering, what am I doing with the, you know, 100 knife sets that I got from the folks over at Kangshan. Uh, I have pinned, or not pinned, I have replied to a roughly 10 or 15 comments in the previous videos. I'll post them both here. Uh, both these videos will have about 10 comments replied to each. And so just reply back to the comment if that's your comment. Check them here, reply back with your email and then I will send a link to where you can purchase the knife sets, uh, knives and knife sets for a dollar. And uh, so every couple of weeks I will do that. I just haven't had time since I've been in Japan, but yeah. Uh, and then I've also selected about 10 of you guys on Instagram to receive a knife set for a dollar as well. Um, so yeah, and you know, I'm getting these, I'm getting rid of these knives as quick as I can in the midst of everything that's happening. Uh, hopefully within the next two or three weeks, I will announce another 20 or 30 winners you know, I'm focusing a lot of my knives on people who serve the community with food somehow. So if you're a chef, if you're a sous chef, uh, if you are a line cook, if you volunteer at a soup kitchen, um, these knives are for you. Um, I want these knives to go to as many people as possible around the world. Um, doesn't matter where you live. I want these knives to go to as many people who are serving others as possible. So that's my goal is to support those who support others, okay? That will be it for this video. Thank you guys for being here. I'm gonna go get some sleep, catch up a little bit <laughs> on some rest, and hopefully get over this jet lag soon so I can just get back to a normal life and uh, producing more videos here. All right guys, thank you for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.